You can turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 15. Another little short sermon here, but an important one. Why can't Bible-believing Christians get along with each other? Why can't Bible believers get along? It's a short title. Why is there so much fighting among Bible-believing Christians? If, if it was real, if it was true Christianity, they would all get along. They would all have the same thing and, and whatever else, uh, same beliefs and, and things like this. Um, that's not true of any group, unless they're just totally just brain dead and just, you know, under total mind control by some cult leader someplace. Uh, Roman Catholics, they say, you know, all the division within the Protestants and, and all these other heretics, and, and, you know, that's because you don't have the church that Jesus founded. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we talk about the division among Roman Catholics, the fighting between the pre-Vatican II and the uh, uh, modern evangelical Catholics. Why don't we talk about that? The ones that are poor, for Pope Francis, the little Jesuit devil that he is, and the ones that are saying he's an antichrist. Catholics, Roman Catholics. <laughs> uh, no, they're not unified. Far from it. But let's see what the Bible actually has to say about the thing of Christians getting along. Acts chapter 15, beginning in verse 36. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. So Barnabas is saying, hey, I want to take along Mark here, and, and stuff, and Paul goes, Are you, Mark? <laughs> that little punk that, you know, I'm putting my own little emphasis on here he left the work he ran away what are you you're going to bring him no no i don't think so look what happened verse 39 and the contention was so sharp between them sharp between them do you get that not the contention was nice and gentle and and they they you know agreed to disagree sharp <laughs> okay and if you, you see, you know, Orthodox Jews and stuff like this, you know, fighting, I mean, they, they get their hands going and they, you know, they're yelling and stuff like that. I mean, they can, they can get pretty crazy. I'm sure that they were just as crazy in the first century. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from, an, from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Um... Which one was right? One of them was in sin, the other was not. Right? Nope. They were both right. Huh? Well, Barnabas probably thought, I'm going to give, you know, Mark another try here and things. And Paul's going, uh, why should we? Let's get somebody else. He had his chance. Let's get, let's get uh, Silas. Let's take him. I think he'd be good for the trip. And Barnabas is going, yeah, but I need to give him another chance. Who was right? They both were. Um, there are going to be times, brethren, that you're going to need to part company for, from another Bible-believing Christian that you know is saved uh, simply because they're going their way and you have to go another way. Galatians chapter 2. There's going to be times that you're going to see, you know, unfortunately... You're going to see people that you thought were saved and they're going to be doing some things and acting pretty much like lost people. And at that point in time, you have to kind of say, well, uh, whether you're saved or not, I don't know, but I'm just going to kind of get away from you right now. Uh, you'll see that. But then there will be other times that you're going to have a truly saved, you know that they're saved, and they're just going to go and start, you know, getting into something and you just got to go, okay, sorry, uh, I got to go a different direction. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. Let's read this. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Well, he should have taken him you know, to the side, probably. Peter, I'm going to talk to you. 
right in front of everybody. Here's one of the original 12 disciples, you know, one of the 11 there. Judas is gone, but, you know, Paul replaced him. Uh, here, but here's one of the guys that walked with Jesus, you know. I mean, one of the one of the inner circle. I mean, that, certainly there needs to be some protocol here. I mean, Paul's kind of the new Johnny Come Lately kind of guy. I mean, he's he's there. He just came walking in, and you don't walk up a Peter. I mean, mm -hmm. no, he walks up to him and he says, "Hey, you're wrong," right in front of everybody. Sometimes you need to do that. And by the way, you know, later on in the, you know, Paul or uh, Peter's letters and things, he says about as our beloved, you know, brother Paul also hath showed us, you know. So it's not that he went, well, you know, uh, no, he said, you know, I'm sure he, you know, said, well, I'm sorry about that. I'm wrong. You're right, brother Paul. I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been doing that. And again, you need to question ministries that don't do that. I've done that a number of times. And you get these wing nuts, you know, these lost people come along and they say, they say, well, you, you won't, you know, you won't take a rebuke. You won't change your thing. Yeah, because you're wrong. All right. If you come along, you're, you're a postie and things. You're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and because you need to be purified and whatever else. I'm not going to submit myself to you. If you teach some plan of salvation that omits repentance and a changed life after salvation, you're wrong. I'm not going to submit myself to you. If you use a new version, it's not the King James Bible, you're wrong. So I'm not prideful for not changing to your warped system of belief. But you come along and you say, hey, brother, um, I know you meant well, but whatever. Whatever the thing is. And I look at the scripture and I go, oh, boy. I'm going to come out and I'm going to address the thing. I'm going to say I'm wrong. But if I'm not wrong, I'm not going to move one inch. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here's another reason why believers don't always get along. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. One body. Understand that. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. One body, but there's a lot of different members of that body. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Hmm. You mean God controls your life as a Christian? Yes, he does. And God might say, hey, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you're trying to do this and trying to help out brother so-and-so there, but you know what? I want you to go that way. He's a finger, you're a foot, or an ear, or an eye, or whatever else. You can't be a finger. Go that way. Okay? So it's not that we don't get along all the time. Sometimes it's just the Lord saying, hey, I want you to do that, I want you to do this. Somebody out there and they're saying, brother, brother Brian, you need to study this flat earth thing. You know, you got to study, you got to look into the flat earth. You have to preach a sermon on the flat earth. I'm not called into that. I am not going to be an expert on every single subject out there. If the Lord has called you to debate the thing back and forth, if it's flat, if it's round, if it's a potato chip or a watermelon or whatever, then do it. But don't try to force your thing on me. You might be an eye and I might be a finger or a foot or whatever else in the body of Christ. You see? And I'm not going to come along to you if you're a street preacher and say, why aren't you making videos? Huh? You know? You say, well, uh, because the Lord has me go out on the street. Well, you're not right with God because you aren't making videos. You know? Uh, different functions in the body of Christ. 
The Lord's given me a teaching ministry, a video ministry. I've had this thing for a long time now, over 10 years now. I'm going to be doing this until the Lord says do something else. You see? Does that mean everybody that watches this has to start their own video ministry? No. No. You can support this ministry, or you can support some other ministry, or you can go out and you can spend your money on gospel tracts, or you can go be a missionary in some foreign country, or you can whatever. You see? But you have a disagreement with me, it doesn't mean I'm a heretic or something because I don't want to submit to what you want me to do. Let's continue. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the hand, head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have... Uh, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant, abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. For ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Goes into chapter 13 and talks about charity. That's what we're supposed to have. That's how you're going to have up here in... Uh, uh, where is it? Verse 26. And verse 25 and 26. The thing of a care for one another and, and, you know, suffering with one another and honor and all the other stuff. Charity is how you keep the body. That's the glue that holds the body together, so to speak. All right? But there have been many, many times, I, I've said this in other studies, uh, you're going to get to a point where the Lord uses this ministry, you know, and myself to teach you the Word of God and you'll get to a point where the Lord will say, okay, you learned from Brother Brian, now I want you to go over here and I want you to do this. And I've seen this thing. And sometimes the Lord, you know, you're kind of holding on a little bit too hard to this ministry and the Lord has to kind of shake you a little bit. And all of a sudden I see somebody and they've, they're have getting mad at me because I said something that they didn't agree with and they're like, I'm done with you and whatever else. Well, I hope that they're saved and I hope that they keep, you know, or just that's the Lord's way of getting them to go do something else because they were just trying to, sit here and watch every video I do or something. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely dealt with people that are false converts. Uh, that is certainly there. I've seen that thing quite a few times, unfortunately. But there have, other, there have been other people I've just like writing back and forth with them, real good fellowship, and all of a sudden it's just boom, and they disappear, and I never hear from them again. And I often think to myself, you know, my wife and I will talk about it, and I'll say, whatever happened to so-and-so? Yeah, I don't know. We haven't heard from him. You never heard from him? They don't comment or anything? No, I, I don't know. You know, and by the same token, I'm, you know, there's times I'll, it'll be a year or two and, and uh, somebody will write me and they'll say, I don't know if you remember me, brother, but uh, I used to write to you about such and such and I'm from wherever. And I go, oh yeah, you know, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, well, parts of the body are overdoing other things, taking care of other stuff. Yeah. So what the lost world looks and they see, they see some of these arguments and things like that. I mean, the Bible says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And so, you know, Bible believers, we have little arguments and little spats and things like that. Like, I mean, you know, can you imagine some lost people standing there watching Paul and Barnabas go at it? And they're yelling at each other, I'm taking Mark. Mark's coming with us. No, he's not. I'm not taking Mark with us. Silas is the right guy. We're not going to take... You know, can you imagine lost people seeing that? They think, look at the cult members. They are, they're fighting each other. No, it's just two brethren having a sharp disagreement. And sometimes Bible believers will have that. You know? It's fine. You know? Okay. Uh, if you've, you know, 
want to leave this ministry and things and don't support this ministry and whatever else, and you're going to go support somebody else, well, make sure that they stick by the buck. Make sure that they aren't, uh, you know, a fraud or a fake. You know, okay, go do that. You know, people will say, I want to come back and, and um, you know, watching your videos again. Well, praise the Lord. Okay, great. Um, you know, whatever. But I will say another thing, and that is that uh, one of the reasons that there's so much fighting among the uh, King James only world is because it's so thoroughly infiltrated. I said this in another study there, but, uh, you know, there's so many fakes in our system right now. And that's why we need to raise our standards up higher. And we need to say, you know what the Bible says, and we're not going to put up with this junk anymore. We'll be talking more about that in an upcoming study, uh, a lot more detail about uh, things that a Christian will not do. Uh, just some easy things that you can look at somebody and say, you're doing that. That's not something a Christian would do. You're false. Goodbye. I'm going to show you the proof of that in an upcoming study. But my whole point is, if we as the body of Christ say, you know what, we're going to raise our standards up. We're going to say, hey, if you believe this, 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 and that, you're not one of us. Get out. If we would do that, uh, you'd see a, a purifying in the body of Christ. And... Um, I had a brother years and years and years ago, and we got to talking to him about the house church thing and things, and, and he was like, you know, I've, I've been going to these different church buildings, and just you know, just so I can hear some of the old hymns and sing the old hymns, and, and then they start preaching, and I'm like, oh, I got it, you know, and he's like, I get up and walk out, you know, because I just can't handle it. It's just so disgusting what they say. Um, just such compromising sissy, just bleh. <laughs> And I remember he said the one time, he said, you know, as far as the house church thing is concerned, he said, I really think that we're going to come full circle before the rapture, before the catching away of the bride of Christ. Um, and he said, you know, I think that they started out in the book of Acts, uh, small groups going, and they were very extremely fervent. And, you know, yeah, they had their contentions and things like that. But, uh, you know, you read about, um, you know, let me see if I can find it quick. You know, there's there was uh, different things that happened, and um, see if I can find it real quickly here. You know, people were not just you know, oh, you know, I want to be a Christian. It's so cool. It's so hip and trendy. I mean, I think that's been one of Satan's greatest uh, tactics is to make Christianity cool. Now you get all these celebrities coming out and stuff, and I have I, I have a relationship with God now. I'm a Christian, you know, or something like this. And, you know, I'm going to make Christian movies and I'm going to this and that. Christianity has become trendy. And, of course, it's not really Christianity. It's churchianity, you know, and, and everything. And, uh, of course, it's going to be the Antichrist system. They're going to receive the Antichrist as Jesus Christ. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I, this is not in my notes. I cannot think of where it is at right now. But, uh, sorry, my... My brain is on so many other things right now. Uh, the thing of Ananias and Sapphira. Um, that's not the, the thing I'm... I think it's in that passage where it talks about, you know, the people, great fear fell on all the church and, and things, and, uh, and about how that, you know, people everywhere magnified them, but no man durst join himself to them. And uh, that's what I wanted to say there. People magnified them. They said, wow, they're really something else. They're really turning the world upside down. These are really interesting people, whatever. Are you going to join? Should, me, that? No, 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 no. You know, you got King Agrippa and Paul's on trial and, and uh, he says, King Agrippa, you know, I know you're I'm paraphrasing here. I know you know what I'm talking about here. You know, uh, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? And King Agrippa says, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he? Because he knew he'd lose his position and he'd be down there with Paul. He didn't say, you know what, Paul? I am, I'm totally cool with this whole thing. I mean, Jesus is my homeboy. I mean, let's, let's get a, a new church building built. We're going to fill it. We're going to have cool things. We're going to get celebrities in there. We're going to have, you know. Uh-uh. Christianity, you know, the Bible talks about then is the offense of the cross ceased. It's the, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. That's what real Bible-believing Christianity is. And we need to get back to a point where the lost world is going to look at Bible-believing Christians and say, boy, there's a group. Those people are something else. They have strong standards. 
again, people out there in the Catholic Church that have the pedophilia scandals and stuff going on, where do you think they want to feel, or where, where do you think they could go to feel safe? Uh, into a church group that has no standards or one that has very strict standards where the children are going to be protected and where perverts are called perverts. And some guy messing around in perversion and stuff like this in your circles that you're with and things, and you say, hey, you go and you confront them. I had to do it. You know, back with Bible Believers Fellowship, I had to confront a guy the one time. He was messing around with perversion, you know. And I, I confronted him right in front of everybody and said, you, up, come here. And I got, you know, another brother that was with me. We went out and I said, you're messing around with perversion. I can tell you're this and you're that and stuff. And he was. It's hard to do. It was embarrassing. But uh, you got to do that. So, we really, I just really feel, again, you know, if we come back to the way things were in the first century, and you actually have, you know, it's one of the big struggles, you know, because I, I know the house church thing is wrong, or, yeah, <laughs> somebody's going to cut that and put that in a video now, you know, uh, Brian Nellinger admits the house church thing is wrong, <laughs> or something like that, you know going to get like a lot of views for them. They can make good Google money that way. Um, church buildings, excuse me, church buildings are wrong. All right. Uh, there's no doubt about that. They're not supported in scripture. We've been over this thing many times and debated back and forth with brethren and, and whatever else and going over the arguments and it's been hashed over and hashed over. They're not scriptural. There's all kinds of other problems there. Okay. Um, and I know that. And I've presented that. But it's like this problem of like, okay, that's true. But how do we get back to a biblical system here? And the only biblical system that I believe would be, uh, have that proper credibility thing is where we can actually have know of faithful brethren that the body of Christ is, we, are, we have our standards, we, we've brought the level of standards back up again to where they should be according to the scriptures and we can say hey we you know so and so was messing around they committed adultery out they go um you know they need to stay away for a while and whatever else uh this guy over here he's not working well neither should he eat out you go um this woman here you know is gossiping or whatever else and dressing him modestly out you go this one over here is, is struggling with pornography out you go you know and we bring the standards up again, and I think that the thing to do is, if we can get to that point, and we have higher standards as Bible believers, then I think start to establish the elders all around the world and say, Brother so-and-so, yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's a contact that you can get in contact with over in Germany, or this one over here in, in California, or this one over here in New York, or what you know you see what i'm saying and uh and then you know and somehow communicate you know like they did in the bible how are we going to get to that i don't know um just a, a thought that we need to do and uh you know i i'm the internet video guy and all this other stuff right now but i'll tell you what i'm starting to realize more and more the need for face-to-face -face fellowship and I don't mean church building social get-togethers, all right? Uh, I, I, I absolutely, you know, just the, the thought of going back to a church building sometime uh, with all the little social structure and everything else, it just makes me want to vomit, quite frankly. Um, I don't want to go back into that and all the little fleshly talk and all the little cliques and all the other stuff and politics and whatnot. Um, no, thank you. What I'm talking about is talk. I want to... I'd love to get to a point where I can talk to brethren and say, let's talk, let's, let's discuss things and, and things like that. I want to be able to know, you know, see people. Again, how are we going to do that? I'm not sure. But, you know, I really think that that's what the body of Christ needs to get back to, where we, we you know, you meet people in your area and things like that, and you can say, okay, um, hey, can I, you know, maybe you can't meet them right away, and you say, can we talk on Skype? Can I call you on the phone? Can I, whatever, 
and uh, start to get a feeling. You know, look at the eyes, look at the body language and things like that. Again, the eyes, watch my study on devil possession in the eyes, you'll, you'll see it in the eyes. Um, a lot of times, the Lord will give you that discernment. And uh, you'll kind of get at that weird feeling like, I don't know why I feel weird, but I really feel weird about this person, you know. And um, I think it'd be great to get back to that uh, and strengthen the body of Christ. Um, and again, you know, I'm going to be talking about this in the next study, um, the thing of purification. Uh, it should be easier to purify ourselves as the body of Christ as the world gets worse. Okay? Because the dividing line gets that much bigger between saved and lost. It's not, well, you know, he's messing around here and things. He might be saved. No, you just look and you say, okay, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing... Out. Get out of here. We're not interested in you. Over here. So, I'm open to suggestions. And this is something we all need to pray about. But that's going to be it. We will see you in the next study.